so I'm here today with Paul Calandra, and Paul Calandra is the incumbent candidate for the federal election in, in Stovall. Uh, so Paul, thanks for joining me today. No, my pleasure to be here. And uh, so tell me a little bit about why you're seeking re-election. Well, look, I think we've uh, had a great two and a half years uh, uh, in office. Uh, proud of the work that we've uh, accomplished not only in Stovall, but across the riding from King uh, uh, to Richmond Hill, uh, Stovall, and uh, parts of Markham that I represent. Uh, the job isn't done, a lot of work to do, still want to focus on, uh, on jobs, the economy, uh, making sure that the urban and rural parts of my riding are, uh, are represented equally, so I'd like uh, another, uh, another mandate to uh, continue the, the, the very good work that I think um, me and my team have done over the last two and a half years. Excellent. Now we uh, helped out with the municipal election, get information mm -hmm. out, and we found that there's a lot of confusion about what the roles are at different level of governments. What does the federal MP do? Yeah, well, gosh, we uh, there's obviously still a little bit of duplication between federal and provincial members, but ultimately uh, we handle, uh, of course, national uh, national defense. There's a federal role in uh, in, uh, in the environment. Uh, uh, taxation, of course, Revenue Canada issues, and of course this being uh, tax time, uh, uh, I know a lot of people are thinking of that, and uh, hopefully they're reflecting on the fact that we've put more money in their pockets. Uh, uh, northern Development, uh, uh, Natural Resources are, are with the, the, uh, the federal government, uh, uh, and on and on. And again, we, of course, we, we deal with health, uh, the, the Canada Health Act. Uh, is governed by the federal government, uh, and again, we pay a lot of. Uh, there's a lot of roles that we share with the provincial government at the same time. Excellent. Um, tell me a little bit because Stouffville is a, has a really interesting urban rural mix mm -hmm. where we're mostly been a rural community, but there's a lot of growth, and that's one of the biggest issues for people in town. So, mm -hmm. talk to me a little bit, if you wouldn't mind, about uh, you know your vision for how Stouffville will grow over the next five years. Um, uh, well, look, I think the, uh, uh, the provincial government uh, mandates uh, growth patterns, and, uh, and part of the, uh, the provincial mandate was that growth should happen around where transit is, of course. Uh, so uh, you're seeing a lot of development around the GO train in, uh, in Stovall. But one of the things that uh, I want to make sure that I accomplished as the member of Parliament was that the rural component of our riding is every bit as uh, uh, their issues are addressed as much as the, the urban parts of the riding. Mm -hmm. uh, and this riding, of course, is a really big dichotomy between the, the very dense urban south of Markham and parts of Stouffville and the rural parts of King and, uh, and Stouffville. So we've got a, a real balance that we have to, uh, have to, uh, to reach. Uh, uh, one of the things that I've done since I've been elected, of course, is to, is to truly represent uh, the rural component of the riding, make sure that farmers' needs are addressed, that we protect class one farmland, that farmers can continue to have the right to, uh, to farm uh, using best farm practices. I think we've uh, achieved that. I'm, I'm proud of that. But I'm also, uh, you know, I, uh, I live in a, in a newer part of Stolo, just south of uh, Main Street. Main Street, again, uh, development around uh, transit links. Uh, so that people can have other options other than just uh, getting in their car and driving. Uh, we've, of course, provided funding to, to, to transit. We've provided funding to the GO train as part of our economic action plan so that there are more options available to people. Okay. And a lot of the times people say that a federal election is all about the leaders. But, uh, of course, the local candidate is important as well. So, you know, why should uh, someone who goes to the polls at the uh, end of the race why should they uh, check down your name? Well, look, uh, again, I said uh, over the last uh, two and a half years, we've, uh, we've been focused uh, exclusively on the economy and jobs and the economy in this riding. So if you look at uh, uh, the riding that I represent, of course, it goes from uh, Schaumburg all the way down to the uh, uh, to Steeles Avenue in the south. So whether it's uh, investments in Schaumburg for a new uh, arena, roads uh, in King, uh, roads in Ballantrae, uh, arena improvements in Stouffville, uh, uh, heritage and cultural restoration in the town of, uh, of uh, Richmond Hill, along with uh, roads and infrastructure, emergency measure center in, uh, in, uh, in Markham, uh, uh, soccer domes, tennis domes. What we've been doing over the last two and a half years is making sure that people have places to play in our community, that when we get out of this global economic crisis, that our roads, uh, our bridges, the infrastructure that people rely on, the business rely on, is there for them so that they can seize on the opportunities of the uh, of, uh, of the renewed uh, economic uh, performance, uh, and we've done that. We've also, you know, one of the things I really promised to do is, hey, I want to communicate with people. We've done that a lot more often uh, uh, than the previous member did. And we want to make sure that we restored that balance between urban and rural. Uh, that's why I opened up a constituency office in the rural part of my riding for the, for the people of King and Oak Ridges so that they could have local access to their, uh, uh, to their member of parliament and not just hiding out in the town of Markham. We have a, a Markham office so that we can address those issues, but uh, 
Uh, ultimately, when you put it together with what the Conservative government has done under the leadership of the Prime Minister through the Economic Action Plan, what me and my team here in Oak Ridge's Mark Room have been able to accomplish by working with the town councils by working with our provincial member of parliament, parliament. I'm very excited about what we've accomplished and I'm really excited about what the future holds and uh, you know over the next uh, uh, term of office I really want to seize on everything we've accomplished to truly unleash the potential of this community. It's, uh, it's uh, an amazing community I'm proud to represent it and of course I'm grateful for the opportunity that people gave me. Excellent. I'm really, actually really glad you brought up those projects too because I wasn't aware of some of them. And it's a lot more than a couple of free skates, which is what yeah. some people, some of your opponents have been saying, you know, you just offered a couple of free skates. Yeah. But you're saying we've gotten, you know, um, soccer facilities or indoor arena mm -hmm. facilities, we've gotten heritage buildings, we've gotten road improvements. A lot has happened locally. Absolutely. There's no part of the riding that hasn't been touched by the, uh, the economic action plan. And let's be honest, it wasn't just a, 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 the federal government that was making these investments. One of the things I'm I'm most proud of is the fact that we've been able to set aside partisan differences with our provincial government. You know, we work very closely with the provincial liberal member of, of parliament and we've worked together because we knew that two, two years ago when the economy was starting to turn that we could either fight each other or we could fight uh, uh, the recession. And that's what we've done, you know, whether it's the mayors of the, uh, the mayors or the councillors uh, across the, the riding and as well as the provincial member of parliament. We've set aside our differences, we've worked on the economy and we've made some really, really uh, great changes for the community. Uh, I, I did read that somebody say that uh, it was uh, only a, f a few free skates uh, uh, and you know it's unfortunate that uh, sometimes uh, people allow their uh, uh, their partisanship to get in the way of what's actually happening uh, uh, in the community. You know when you really look at what we've done we've made over 300 million dollars worth of investments in our community through the economic uh, action plan and it's not just uh, uh, facilities uh, you know we've also looked at uh, uh, eco energy uh, upgrades to many of our uh, of our facilities so that they can start using less uh, uh, energy uh, uh, and I'm very proud of uh, proud of that uh, so we've done a lot we've accomplished a lot we've got a lot of work still to do uh, we'll get the job done and uh, again I hope that over the next uh, term of office people will again put their uh, uh, their support behind me and give me the honor of serving them again Okay. Now, one of the controversial issues has been the re-elect signs, mm -hmm. uh, and they're a little, it's a little confusing. As a resident, I drive down the road and I see re-elect this person and re-elect uh, that person. Who's the true incumbent, and what do you have to say on that issue? Yeah. Well, look, uh, I, uh, I, I've said that right from the beginning. I, 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 I'm flattered that uh, the former uh, member of parliament is, uh, is seeking to be returned to office on the basis of my record and all the things that I've accomplished over the last. Uh, uh, two and a half years, but ultimately he has to explain to the people this uh, writing uh, why he chose to uh, uh, run a campaign in that fashion, and I'll leave it to him to uh, explain to the, uh, the people of Oak Ridge's Markham uh, why he did that and uh, what his uh, thinking and strategy behind that was. Okay, now um, one of the topics I want to get into uh, that's really specifically uh, to our local community mm -hmm. is the Pickering Airport. Yep. Can you give us an update on what's going on with Pickering? It's a, it's a pretty controversial site. Yeah. Uh, well, obviously, right now there's there's no decision with respect to uh, to uh, to an airport. Uh, we have uh, announced uh, recently in our in our platform that there would be a, a uh, the government of Canada, if, if the Conservatives are re-elected, we would support the creation of a of a national Rouge National Park to the south uh, uh, on some of those lands on the platform that is the Rouge National Park. I have always advocated uh, that on the uh, York Durham side. Uh, that those lands that have been reserved for the, uh, the Pickering Airport are actually surplus to any potential airport's needs and that they, because it's class one farmland, should be reserved for the farmers who are farming the land. We have to do everything in our power to protect uh, uh, the farmers' rights to farm. I'm very, very proud of the fact that the announcement we made with respect to uh, Arusha National Park uh, not only respects the farmers and protects class one farmland, uh, that it also allows Mark with the town of Markham to address its infrastructure needs. Um, look, uh, when it comes to a Pickering Airport, uh, uh, as a member of Parliament uh, for the area, uh, I don't want to see uh, anything that would jeopardize uh, our community. I know that the, the that York Region is in favor of an airport. I also know that uh, Durham Council is in favor of, a, of an airport. I'm not in favor of a large airport on the scale of, uh, of Pearson, but if there's something that we can do to encourage a, a replacement for Buttonville, I think that's something that we should look at and those lands have been reserved for the extreme uh, eastern portion of the Pickering Airport lands. But of course, nothing has been decided and, uh, and we're a number of years away from uh, any final decision. But ultimately, in the short term, uh, we have an opportunity on the, on the, on the York side of the, uh, of the, of the boundary to, to address all the needs, address the needs of, 
infrastructure for the people who live in Cornell and for Mark and for the town of Markham residents mm -hmm. uh, to keep our farmers farming on that class one uh, farmland and also give people access to uh, to a national park and it's something that uh, I've worked on over the last uh, uh, two and a half years I think it's no secret that I wasn't in support of the original uh, 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 approach that the Rouge Park Alliance uh, was talking about they were talking about a, a park that's extended from the Lake Ontario all the way to the town of uh, Stovall Boundary, which would have seen 50% of the class one farmland reforested, fought against that, but uh, uh, the Prime Minister and the Conservative Party have listened and we've got a great proposal that respects everybody in the area and I'm quite proud of that. Excellent. It kind of touches on property rights and I just a really quick question. Are property rights something we would need to look to the provincial government for or with the green belt and the, the different classifications yeah. of lands? Yeah, we have talked about uh, property rights both in the last election and in this election, what we can do to actually encourage uh, property rights. Uh, and if you look through our platform, we, we do talk about that. We talk about uh, how, you know, conservative government brought in the Bill of Rights uh, mm -hmm. uh, and that we also want to look at a way of guaranteeing people's property rights. We have. Uh, uh, you know, we've heard that a lot, especially in this area. That's one of the reasons when you talk about the Pickering Airport, uh, uh, one of the things, uh, you know, a lot of farmers came to me and said, look, we were expropriated, our lands were expropriated for, uh, for an airport, and now some people are saying it should be turned into a, uh, to a national park. Uh, uh, so, you know, there was a lot of anger and, uh, and uh, frustration over that. So we got to do a better job of protecting people's property rights, while at the same time protecting the right of the, of the, of the government to make decisions on infrastructure and, and the economy. And I think that we can make that balance uh, uh, if we show uh, leadership at both the federal level and the provincial level and work with our partners at all levels to make sure that we, we get uh, uh, an act or, uh, or a bill that uh, guarantees people's rights but doesn't impact uh, negatively on the government's ability to get uh, uh, infrastructure for, uh, for the communities. Okay. Um, I just have a couple more questions for you. We've talked a lot about uh, some community-based things, but um, the track record I know that you've been particularly interested in is related to business. Mm -hmm. And uh, in particular, we've talked in the past about red tape and some things yeah. the government wants to do. So obviously, uh, you came out with a budget that was uh, not passed mm -hmm. and was some government to uh, dissolve. Um, if you're re-elected, what are you going to do for the business community? What are some of your priorities? You know, uh, well, you know what, we, uh, as we, as uh, I've said a lot, so we have to focus on, first and foremost, we have to focus on red tape. Red tape. Uh, uh, there's a lot of red tape that the business community faces. I was really pleased that the, uh, uh, in the throne speech, the last throne speech, the Prime Minister announced that we would create a red tape commission, and we've now got a red tape commission that is, uh, is crisscrossing the country and looking at ways of reducing red tape for our small businesses. But it goes beyond that. Uh, I keep, you know, I keep saying we have to unleash the potential of our communities, uh, and part of that is unleashing the potential of our small businesses. And for a riding like mine, you know, you, you only need to go down the main streets of, uh, of Markham, uh, uh, Stouffville, uh, Schaumburg, and, uh, and Richmond Hill to see that, yes, while there's a vibrant uh, small business community, they need our help. And that's why in the budget we announced uh, tax credits for small businesses that, uh, that create jobs. But it's more than just small business. We have to look at our manufacturers. You know, when we look at... Uh, at Markham, uh, the part of Markham that I represent uh, is home to many high-tech. Uh, it's known as the one of the high-tech capitals of Canada. Yeah. Uh, very proud of the fact that the Prime Minister came here last uh, uh, beginning of the campaign and announced a, uh, a support for uh, uh, you Canadians who are looking to have their credentials recognized. And what I was also pleased was that we were doing it in a place, Novo Plastics. It's a manufacturer who set out in 2006 and then all of a sudden was seized with the with a downturn. But what we did was we put in place uh, help for our, our manufacturers. You know, we reduced the duty on, on machinery that they imported so that they could actually upgrade their, their uh, facilities, upgrade their machinery so that they could compete not on the backs, on the basis of the low dollar, but on the basis of productivity. And we're starting to see our manufacturers come back. We're starting to see them start to create jobs again. And I'm very, very excited about that. You know, and, and that's something that we have to continue. We, Ultimately, by reducing taxes for our businesses, by reducing taxes for the people who create jobs, that's what gives us the tax money, that's what creates jobs, that's what gives us the ability to fund health care, to protect our environment, to build new roads, and to do the kind of services that people, I think, uh, not only demand, but, uh, uh, but are the responsibility of all levels of government. Excellent. Okay. I guess I'm going to say, because it's been great to have you uh, take the time to do this, Parting, any parting words uh, to the people of Stovall? Well, look, I, I, I say this. Uh, it's, it's been uh, the uh, 
truly an honor and a privilege for me to be able to serve the community over the last uh, uh, two and a half years. There's not a day that goes by that I'm not grateful for the uh, uh, for the support and the opportunity that they have given me, and uh, I will continue to do my best to make sure that I represent uh, not only Stovall, my hometown, but the entire uh, Oak Ridge's Markham riding uh, with honor and be honest with them. Uh, and make sure that I communicate as often as I possibly can to get the job done that uh, you put me there. And uh, again, I hope on May the 2nd that they'll honor me with another term in office. Great. And if somebody uh, does want to come out and see you, are you coming? Or where, where should they look for your yeah. different events coming up? Yeah, they'll always, uh, you know, there's, of course, our, our campaign office is uh, in Stouffville, just uh, east of, on Stouffville Road, just uh, east of, uh, of Woodbine. Uh, PaulCalandra.ca, uh, of course, has uh, many of the events that uh, we're attending. Okay. We're doing, obviously, a lot of door knocking. Uh, so I'm out on the streets pretty much uh, most of the day. Uh, but paulcalandra.ca or they can follow me on Twitter and on Facebook and they can see where we are at any time okay. or they can give me a call uh, and, uh, and uh, there there's going to be a debate in, uh, in Stouffville on I believe it's April 29th at uh, okay. the Parkview Auditorium and that's uh, another great opportunity for people to uh, uh, take their, the people who want to represent them to task and, uh, and see right. what we can do for the community. And that's an evening event, is it? It is, 7 o'clock. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Paul. Appreciate it with your busy yeah. schedule. You're taking the time and I wish you the best of luck. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Okay, thanks. Okay.